Hello everyone, it's Ometer, and today is CC Designs preview day number two. Now today we are previewing the set stamp and, sorry, the stamp, the set coffee and cookie stamp and die set. Now this has so many cute little critters and so many different kinds of coffees that they are holding and they're all snug and in their winter baths and their winter little cute outfits super 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 cute so what i decided to do was uh, first thing i could think of when i thought coffee was of course my favorite starbucks and after that after i had a latte i said you know what a good idea would be gift card holders it is the holiday season and we'll be making gift card holders for friends and for family co-workers whatever the situation is so i slapped on my copics and i went ahead and started coloring now i Ironically, do not remember all of the cook picks that I used, and I did already put them away. Good job, Amador. As you can see, I hold some of the lids up on the up to the screen. I mean, um, in front of the screen, so you can see. But what I do to make it easier for me is I choose colors that. Let's say I'll grab four colors, four shades of this brown, and I used the same set throughout all of these three little critters. Now I just went as I went down the line to the to the deer. I used the three lighter sets for the body and just the darker ones for the antlers. Now, this cute, cute little fox, I had to just start it out. This little fox and this, it's drinking coffee, so it totally makes me think of my friend Carol. Carol, if you're watching, hey, hey, girl. So I wanted to go ahead and color them all. And as you can see, I'm using the same colors so I can do all the coloring of the browns at the same time. Towards the end of the coloring, I do all of the coloring of the reds and the grays. I want to get it all in a sequence so it's easier for me. Now, the full coloring of this set took me about 35 to 40 minutes because I went back. I was overthinking it and I was trying to find other colors. But I'm like, you know what? Stick with the same series of colors and that would be absolutely perfect for these little critters. Like I said, I used the same four just back and forth from the lightest to the darkest to be able to show a different variation of the colors, but they are the same colors. And along with the grays as well, they are the same colors. Now for the ears and the cheeks, I do use R30. It's a little bit lighter than the most that people use is R20. Because I like that lighter look. And uh, there's this is R00 for the inside of the ears, you know, the pink soft part of the ears, something light, something soft. And you can see most of the colors. This is E, the darkest one is E37, E35, E34, and I also, or 33, excuse me. And I also use, I think, um, E41. And for the pants, because I made all of their pants the same kind of khaki colors, I used all the same on all three of them for their pants and their shorts. It was just easier that way. But like I said, if you see on the screen right there, I do try to hold all of the Copic caps to the front so you're able to see them and take note. I know when I started to learn how to Copic color, I did watch a lot of people coloring and that is how I chose the colors that I use for me to buy because let's be honest they're not cheap but i had to um splurge and get some of these going so here i guess i said i used the r30 for the cheeks it's just a softer pink than what um what most people use i just like it it as a lighter color now i move on to the c's for the for the gray for the pea coat on the deer and also for the little hoodie on the bear as you can see, I use C3, C1, and C00, I believe, just to give it a lighter color. And then I went ahead and went back over it with the darker colors where I just speckled a few of little spots just to give it more of that wool look. You want it to, I want it to look a little bit more natural to have that wool look on this pea coat because I love a good pea coat. Now, I have dark navy ones. I don't know why I didn't do it navy. I think because... I wanted the little bear to have a gray hoodie, so I said, hey, I'll just go ahead and do it all with the grays. 
here I'm, and the funny thing is I go back and forth because I forget maybe the feet, I forget the hands, it's just a hot podge of going back and forth. But since I have the same colors already on the table that I used on all three of them, it is easy peasy. I don't have to go back looking through my Copics and all of that stuff. Anyhow, with my babbling, <laughs> keep in mind these stamp sets will all be released on December 6, 2018. That is the big release day, and we also have a few others, and they're so, so, so cute. Um, my next project, um, I mean, my project for that release day will be a snowman project. It is so, so cute. But I was totally, totally happy with these little critters. They're just so cute. And they have so many other little coffees. This is just the hot coffee cup that I used for all of them. They're, and the funny thing is I didn't color it on, on camera because I totally, totally forgot. And then I colored it after the fact for the for the 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 gift card holders so here i'm using uh 43 41 and and i think 40 those are the colors that i use for the khaki pants um it's a nice nice khaki and i totally totally fell in love with it for the boots i do use the n6 and 4 and i think n0 just to give it that gray, dark, dark color. And see here, I forgot to color in his legs. So just a little, little bitty spot. And just, you know, go ahead and go in and get it, get it covered up. Now, as you can see, I wanted to start with the shading for this little hoodie. And I start with gray. I go back and forth because it was totally, totally going crazy trying to figure it all out. But I absolutely fell in love with it. Here, I am just going to... I wanted all of all of my light sources are in the middle above my little critters and I just figured if I do my light source all in the same way it's just much easier to get it all going and to keep it all on track because sometimes I will have certain images that I'm coloring one is on one side one is on the other and I forget my light source and then generally I just keep making them in the center center and above. That's the pretty much the easiest I can think of <laughs> because that way the shadows and the darker parts of the coloring will be at the bottom or towards the lower part of the critters. Now, I did speed this up. Like I said, this took a little bit longer than I wanted, so I sped it up So and it ended a voiceover, so it would be much easier to kind of look at. I have been told in the past that when I color... When I color, it's, it's hard because I turn the paper around. It's just much easier for me to color if I'm rotating the paper as opposed to rotating my hand. But I tried really, 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 really hard this time, you guys, so I can keep it in frame, and seriously, in frame, and keep it in front of the camera for and without spinning because it was just much easier to see. Now, for the reds, I do use R24, R27, and R29. I think everybody uses those shades. I've seen so many people that use the, those shades for the reds, and I did the red on this Argyle sweater and on the sweet scarf for the deer. Now, as I'm finishing up, I do a little bit of the C0, oh, I'm sorry, the W1 and W0, on the whites of this argyle sweater just to give it a little bit of shading and the red of the scarf i just oh my gosh i just love this little scarf it's all flowing in the wind and i start with the darkers the r29 then go to r27 and then r24 i wanted to keep it as simple as possible as least amount of sh um, coloring and shading that i was going to do but i went back and forth trying to get a little bit of that darker in the shadowy parts. I just didn't want it to blend into one color. And voila, here I have them die cut. And like I said, I forgot that I put, I colored the little cups in the, um, in the aftermath of everything. And I, with the little stripes, all I did was I used the same colors that I used for the khaki pants. And I just drew little stripes going down to kind of show that corrugated part of the coffee sleeve. Now I'm using this Honeybee Stamps coffee cup die. This is the coffee card die. They do have a gift card holder, but I didn't like the way it was structured. So I went ahead and got this one. And then I just used the MFT, MFT gift card, gift card, grooves 
right here as you can see it i used the larger one so i can have my gift card standing up and all i did was just place that where i wanted the card on the inside and then i ran it through my big shop I have a Big Shot Express, which makes it super easy because I'm too lazy to crank, apparently. But I have it off to the, to my side desk, hence why you saw me disappear for just a moment while I get that cut. Now, here I'm just showing how the gift card fits inside, and it would be ready to go. Now, typically, you can actually do this with two-sided paper, and, and you would be good to go. But I wanted this candy cane stripe, this kind of wonky candy cane um, diagonal, not... Uh, candy cane stripe for my cups and I went ahead and just ran the die twice with the partial paper in the underneath the die so that way it only cut this part and then all I did have to do is just create the card fold it over and then just snip off that little extra piece and I'll use it later on for something and that is ready to go so I'm just doing the rest of the cards because I wanted them all to be identical pretty much in the base if I chose to give this as a set to somebody so they can give out uh, gift cards to somebody else. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. I love gifts that keeps on giving. I love gifts that you can repurpose the packaging and then have it, you know, and send it to somebody else. So it's like working its way twice fold. So it wasn't just a waste of paper. But here I am just finishing up and I started putting glue on the cover of the the base of the card and then I'm like you know what let me just put on the base of the folded card and this was run on 110 pound cardstock when you run the die this coffee card die it will automatically create an embossing line so that is where I'm folding and that is where I'm cutting along now here is here are the dies that create the coffee sleeve it, it's two dies and they have those little tabs that i just snipped off and it creates a full coffee sleeve that you can actually physically slide on and off of the coffee cup now i wanted to give it a little bit more realistic look so i went ahead and i scored it on every eight inch score on my martha stewart scoreboard now i started with the, i moved to the bone folder but then i remembered that the bone folder the silicone bone folder does not leave any shiny parts and i kind of wanted that with the so to accent the faux corrugation of the card of the cup what is it called coffee sleeve the coffee cup sleeve <laughs> it had a more of a realistic feel now the lids i just die cut them out of heavyweight cardstock as well and i created i cut up some mounting foam for it to just go it just i just wanted to have a little bit more of a dimensional feel because some of the items are going to be dimensional on the card and I am just creating all of my bases. Like I said, this could be a gift card set for a friend, a family member. It could even be for a coworker because we give a lot of coffee to our coworkers. I know I love getting Starbucks cards. Hint, hint, in case anybody wants to know. Like, what would Amateur like? Well, coffee. <laughs> uh, my, my world runs on coffee. <laughs> coffee and crafting apparently but you see here it's all cut up and the gift card fits perfectly and smoothly and look how cute these little critters look on top of everything now i've already adhered them here because i totally forgot i needed sentiments so i went back and used the sentiments from the stamp set it does have a few coffee themed stamps uh sentiments but they're mostly related to the critters like a bear an owl a fox theme and a friend theme I mean, and the deer thing. So I went ahead and cut them. Now, what I wanted to use, I love, now I love using like little banners and stuff like that to cut out my sentiments. Now, this little banner, this fishtail banner is actually part of the dies for the quad collage die set. So I cut some of them and they have, it has actually a few other different dies and um, banners. And there's this cute, cute little banner with a heart cut into it. So of course, you know, I had to use this. And here I am just trying to figure out where I'm going to put this. Now, in retrospect, I could have planned the sentiment placing on the deer ahead of time, but this is how we figure it out as we go. 
And I'm not sure if I mentioned, but the coffee sleeve, I didn't do the full portion that wraps around the coffee cup. I only did the front, so it is able to be opened straight up. You don't need to use the, lose the little sleeve, because if you take off the sleeve, all that little work that you did with these little critters, it's basically just going to come off and be abandoned somewhere. But this way, it is part of the card. Now, when the person giving out the gift card, they can write a message on the top part of the card, but it can also be sent as a gift because they do coordinate, they do match very well, and you can send them as a gift to anyone, to a friend or family member for them to give out for the holidays. And here I'm just adjusting the little banners to, I don't know in what reasoning, truth be told, I think I did it like three or four times. And I was able to eventually just get it, tack it down, and move on. The other ones were a little bit easier. The one with the deer was a little bit harder because I wanted the deer and its scarf to be more on the cup. Therefore, I didn't leave a lot of room for a sentiment. But it totally worked out. This little bear one, oh my gosh, this bear in this hoodie is just to die for. It's just too, too, too cute. I can't, I can't get over it. Seriously, it's, it's, it's cute, but the deer is my favorite. You know, you shouldn't pick favorites, but the deer is my favorite. It is just too cute. Like, I see the peacoat and I see the scarf. I'm like, we could be twins. I'm going to go get that outfit right now. Maybe I'll create, um, turn that little deer into like a pin and put it on a, my a lapel pin on my coat. I know, I'm crazy, but you know, that's how it works here. <laughs> that's how it works here in the crazy craft room. Now, if, uh, to, uh, from the first part, I was going to pop up these sentiments on foam, but I decided I wanted them flat. That way, the focus and the centerpiece are my cute little critters having a cute little tea with some friends. Like I said, this is a full set, and you can even make the other ones, and it could have been a set of four, but I'm not the biggest fan of owls. The other one, the other critter is an owl. I know that's crazy, but that's just what it is. So that is the full process, you guys. Thank you guys for sticking around and letting me babble on for you. I hope you guys liked it and maybe inspired a little bit. So now here we have our three, our finalized gift card holders. The gift card is right in there. I have several of those, but this is just one that I used already. So these are already set. You can make this a gift set or anything super quick and easy. It was just harder figuring out which way I was gonna layer those little banners. That may have been better planned. <laughs> it may have been better planned, but um, I think it's adorable. I think it makes it work. And I absolutely love the centerpiece of these gift card holders that are these beautiful, beautiful little critters in their winter wear. So thank you guys for stopping by. Check out CC Design Store. And the new release is coming up in a couple of days. So make sure you check out, take a look at the store. But how cute are these? All right, everybody. Thank you for stopping by. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone.